Hello and welcome to that second episode of the Bitbucket, my channel dedicated to computing history and long forgotten computers. Today we are going to stay for a while in Soviet Russia. Oh, those Russians. I won't make an habit of it, I promise, but I came across a very nice example of forgotten technology that could be made relevant today with just a bit of uh, imagination. The computer I unearthed uh, in my research was called the Saturn and it was built in 1958 by uh, Sergei Sobolev and uh, Nikolai Brusensov. Uh, Sobolev left uh, the project in 1960 he was the uh, one with uh, clout in the academia to make it happen, so uh, after his departure, uh, Brusen's love tried to, to keep going, but he wasn't uh, powerful enough in the Soviet system to really push forward his ideas. And the Saturn computer they were building uh, was too different uh, in those days to really make uh, an impact on the market. Nonetheless, they built uh, 50 examples of it against all odds and they did not fulfill uh, all the orders they had uh, for this type of machine. It was a, a cheap uh, computer, so we are not going to go very deep into the technology behind because it was very simple, it was made for ferrite cores and diodes, it had no transistors and no uh, electronic tubes. It was not powerful, it had about uh, 50 to what we call words of uh, memory in RAM and it had about grand total 2000 words of memory including the magnetic drum that was used as temporary storage, so it was a very limited uh, computer, but it was an extraordinary one because it was a discrete non-binary computer. It was not an, an analog machine, it was not a binary computer, it was a balanced ternary computer. Pardon. What does that mean? In a conventional binary computer, Numbers are expressed in base 2 and uh, they are by nature unsigned. In base 3, when we use a balanced base 3, numbers are represented using minus 1, 0 and 1 and they are by nature signed. And we are going to see that in examples now. But first thing first, a bit of binary logic before we tackle the balance ternary, just to set things in perspective. Take an arbitrary number. It's positive, so it's either signed or unsigned. While it's unsigned, you have a pattern of bits here. And you know, it goes by power of twos. So, first bit is 2 power 0, that is 1, uh, 2 power of 2, uh, which is uh, 2 power of 1, uh, sorry, which is 2, which is currently 0, and etc, etc, etc. Let's suppose we want to sign our arithmetics and use minus 77. A naive approach would be to use the leftmost bit as a sign bit. But if we do that, we end up with a big trouble, which is this number. This number in sign arithmetics would be minus zero, which is a problem, of course. Nobody wants to have minus zero somewhere in, its, in his calculations. So that's not what was done and the scheme that was finally devised and adhered to by almost everyone in the industry was to use 
the two complements arithmetics which does something like this it's more simple than it looks you simply flip all the bits and you add one see flipping all the bits so this one should be zero but you add one it's one what does it do uh, well it's uh, for instance uh, say you want uh, to add uh, seven tuk -tuk -tuk. Ah, it works it's still minus 70 so it's a good system for addition and it's a good system for subtraction gives proper results there is no double zero problem not a plus zero and minus zero it's much more simple but it comes with a price and the price is here what you do when you're programming is basically computing things together and testing the result to know where to go next in the program and jump to that place and then, this is hidden in most high-level languages, but in assembly you see that there are an enormous amount of jump instructions and a good third of these instructions are reserved for signed or unsigned arithmetics and basically they do the same thing, but they don't test the same flag registers. So it's easy to imagine that if we had a naturally signed system, we could do away with one third of the complexity of the branch part of the processor, but we could do away with the complexity of the multiplication, we could do away with the complexity of the division, and etc. 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 There is a enormous number of instructions and electronical circuits on the die of the microprocessor which are reserved to faking assigned arithmetics out of a binary system that is totally unsigned. So this is where we arrived at the ternary system which is signed by default and which is very powerful. Let me show you. The basic unit of ternary oopsie, sorry, is the treat. The value of the treat is either 1, 0 or minus 1. Usually represented by plus 0, minus. Treats are grouped by in trites and the trite oopsie, is six treats. So again, like we've seen in binary, we go by power of three. Not two of course, but three. So three zero, three one, three two, three three. 3, 4, 3, 5. This one is 1, this one is 3, this one is 9, 27, 81, 243. As you can notice, this is very close to the 255 we get in a traditional binary byte. But you must understand that, in fact, it's double the expressivity of the binary byte because it's also valid for negative numbers. So the range is minus 243 upward to 43. So, how do we do the computation? Well, easy. Take our 77. 
in decimal. It's somewhere between 81 and 27. It's bigger than 27 plus 9 plus 3 plus 1. Therefore, we have to set 0 here, 81, and we have to remove from, it, from 81 the difference between 81 and 77, which is 4, and 4 is 3 plus 1. Therefore, we have 0, 0, minus, minus, and we've got our 27. What if we want minus 77? Easy. We flip the non-zero treat. Let's do the computation. Minus 81 plus 3 plus 1 equals minus 77. So, we see that it's perfectly operational in arithmetics and doesn't change anything. What it changes is the branch. Because everything you're doing now, all the comparisons you're doing between registers and uh, all you can think of, uh, are naturally signed. You don't care anymore to know in which system you are and if your bits are this and that. They, they are always the same. The sign bit is not in a fixed place anymore. The sign of a number is the sign of the leftmost non-zero trip. So it's very easy. There are just one circuit that does both, which is much, much more efficient than what we do in binary. So as I said, uh, the Saturn did not have a very long lifespan. It was dismantled at the Moscow State University in 1965 and the um, Posentlov's uh, team was disbanded almost. They had to take quarters into a student hostel and build things out of the basement. Well, it was a, <laughs> a bit of a mess. But finally, in 1970s, they built another Setun, the Setun 70, which is even more unremarkable than the first uh, model. We have no... I, I couldn't find any figures for production models or things like that. It is said to have been the base for the Navestnik uh, system, which was a computer-aided uh, learning system for students. And that was the end of the ternary computing as we know it. So there really isn't much to say uh, about the hardware. But uh, the software gave uh, an offspring, which was a computing language called DSSP. The DSSP is a close cousin to the fourth language. It looks very much the same, it uses reverse mm -hmm. Polish notation mm -hmm. and it has been updated uh, again until the late 90s. I have no inform further information. Uh, this language differs from the fourth language because it was not created out of necessity but it was uh, sought as a mathematically perfect language from the outset and it was tailored to the turn balanced ternary logic. Um, when the Setun uh, could not support it anymore because there was no hardware to run it on the metal, uh, the DSSP language embedded a kind of virtual machine which is the closest way you can today run a ternary computer on that virtual machine which basically emulates uh, a full Setun 70 inside your own PC. So I hope you were interested. Thank you for watching this uh, small video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give me a little blue thumbs. It always, it's always pleasant. Uh, if you didn't like it for any reason, it's important to me that you let me know in the comments because that's the only way I can 
uh, improve my videos and if you really 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 enjoyed it <laughs> don't forget to share it to your friends on your social networks so more people can become aware of this channel thank you very much have a great time 